everybody, welcome back inside the stash report from the stash project. So, in this video, we are going to be dispelling the rumor that you may have heard that's been going around the hobby for years. What is that, you might ask? Well, <laughs> it's that the hobby is dying. In this video, we're going to take a look at the upcoming kits we expect out of the domestic manufacturers. That would be your Mobius, your Ravel, and your Round 2 in 2024. Yes, next year. Well, the hobby may die at some point in time. We're all going to die at some point in time. But in the meantime, it's not going to happen next year. So let's take a look. We have, again, those three companies, uh, you know, Salvino's JR is sort of a month-to-month -month type of operation uh, in the sense of, uh, you know, what they release. Globally, of course, they will have a 120th scale uh, IndyCar coming out sometime in the beginning of 2024, and that will be uh, done in two or three drivers initially, and then they plan to probably... At some point through the rest of 2024, uh, release it as a couple of more drivers. Their intention, similar to what they do with the NASCAR series, is to do uh, the Indy 500 winner every year. Uh, they have licensing from Indy itself and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, so they will do the Indianapolis 500 winner. And then they are also probably going to do the championship car, assuming it's not one of the cars that they have already released for the year uh, you know, previously. Uh, they're may or may not be plans to you know do more with this tooling in the sense of going backwards uh from my understanding from talking to some open wheel friends there wouldn't be uh, a great deal of modifications required to take it backwards like into 2022 and 2021 and, and ever since it's been on this sort of spec car chassis that indycar has been using uh, but that, of course, is all speculation as to what they may plan to do within the future. There are several kits available for pre-order on the Salvino's website if you want to take a look at what those cars are going to be. It's an incredibly large pain in the butt to download Salvino's images uh, into this system that I used to edit with because they have their images sort of locked behind uh, web security. And the way I do it well, most of the time is to take screenshots of stuff, and that involves transferring stuff off my phone. And I don't just don't feel like doing that. If you're interested in open wheel cars, price on those is probably going to be around $80 uh, retail, which will probably put it in the 62 ish on the shelf, maybe. Which for um, a all new, you know, F1 car. Indy car, open wheel car, it's not that bad a price. Ebro is charging around that price. To me, it hasn't released an open wheel car, a uh, new one, since, you know, the mid 20 teens, so it's hard to say what they would charge for a new one. Ebro, really, the only company producing um, new F1 kits, because Fujimis are all reissues of stuff they've done in the past. So their pricing is more in line with the fact that, you know, they own the tooling and it's already paid for and it's just reissuing at that point. You're just paying licensing for drivers and sponsors. So that'll be coming, uh, may be more Mopar, uh, vintage Mopar NASCAR kits coming out of Salvino at some point, but with this new and sudden lurch to Indy cars, uh, those projects have been pushed off, and we'll see where exactly those wind up coming in uh, as the Mustang, the NASCAR Mustang, next-gen car, the current Mustang, if you will, will require a new body for 2024 as the NASCAR car is changed to more... Uh, appropriately meet and match the looks of the real car so uh that you know those two a big chunk of tooling going into that indy car and then a small chunk of tooling going into updating the mustang is pushing off like all new projects sometime probably into the towards you know next fall so we'll see what ends up with that we do have some images of some stuff uh from the other companies we mentioned like mobius and, and whatnot so mobius was at the uh, if I could find my files here. <laughs> uh, I was doing too many things at one time. There we go. Uh, they were at the Hobby Show in Las Vegas. It's a, a hobby retailer's show, I believe is what the, uh, what the gist of that was. And they debuted two, uh, two new projects. One sort of an extension of an existing project, and one is an all-new project. So the extension of the project is this. These are, pardon, these are screenshots of a bad live stream, so bear with the image quality. Uh, this is a 65 Dodge Coronet in a factory stock form. Uh, this will be a continuation uh, of the 65 Mopars that already exist within the Mobius lineup. 
Uh, there are going to be a couple of other 65 Dodges coming as well. We'll cover here in a second, but this is a, like a, a new drop as far as the projects go. And then the other one is this, a new series of Chevrolet C10 pickup trucks. This particular image is of a 1967 Custom. Like, it's not an actual, like, factory stock truck. I don't know why they chose that. If you're Google image searching what you're bringing out, maybe you should, I don't know, have the actual object and also spell coming correctly and not, for some reason, not capitalize it, although every other word in that is capitalized. <laughs> as I critique the flyer, but uh, it'll be really cool. 68 to 72 uh, Chevy GMCs, probably one of the more wanted things, reflecting back to the fact that, you know, there's an MPC kit and an AMT kit of those, but neither one of them are particularly spectacular. Both of them have some, some issues uh, with body proportions and just the fact that they're old, and I believe in the fact that if you can make new stuff, so long as it's not worse than the old stuff, it should be made. We, we live within a brethren of, uh, within the hobby community of, you know, armor and uh, aircraft, Gundam, sci-fi, that are constantly always getting new, redone versions of things that have already come out. As a matter of fact, 15-year-old tools in the IPMS community are considered to be old and out of date. That's why they're constantly a new P-51, a new P-48, a new F-16, constantly, because they're always the latest, greatest, and, and most you know comprehensive new tooling. Now, sometimes those new tooling kits are worse than the things they're trying to replace. Fully understand that. But we in the automotive community live in the, this grandma's garage past where it's like, well, that was done back in 1972. We don't need a new one of those. Okay, great. That was 51 you know, years ago. Yeah. Yeah, we do. <laughs> you wouldn't, I mean, we all like to live in this dream world where we all drive old cars around, but we wouldn't drive them daily. I just, I mean, some people would. There'd be that crazy guy who lives off grid that has an 85, you know, Ford Ranger and it has no plans to replace it. But for the rest of us, we like power steering and air conditioning, no matter how much we want to complain about new cars being appliances, right? Anyway, so this will be, should be a series of kits, uh, much like the Fords were in the sense that they should go from 78 to 68 to 72. It should be possibly a long bed, a short bed. Maybe we'll throw a four-wheel drive at you. Maybe we'll throw a GMC at you. There's no real... Uh, details of this, other than the fact that this has been something under works for a very long time. A lot of people have speculated about this coming because they've heard little drips and drabs of information over the course of the last couple years, but it is now officially an announced project. So other 65 Dodges that are in the works, you may have seen this if you uh, are on Facebook or Instagram at all. This is an altered wheelbase 65 Dodge uh, in the Dave Strickler Racing uh, livery. Box art done here by uh, Sean Svensson. And this will be a Model King release, branded Model King release of this uh, thing. So it shares the underpinnings, the chassis, and all the race gear with the 65 Altered Wheel Base Plymouth that already exists. You're just getting the Dodge body. Uh, there's a couple of hoods, a couple of grills, and uh, should be an interesting kit for folks that like Altered Wheel Base drag cars and you know have wanted a Dodge Coronet version of it for a while. And there's also in the offing a A990 super stock version, which is sort of the, uh, you know, a drag strip, uh, you know, kind of car, but not quite so uh, shortened in the wheelbase. <laughs> a regular wheelbase uh, uh, super stock car. So that again coming out for the drag aficionados at some point in the future. Expect the Model King kit to possibly hit before the end of the year. Uh, not totally sure on that. This super stock is probably in the first quarter, maybe into the second quarter of uh, 2024. The C10 and the 65 Coronet factory stock, expect those towards Christmas of next year. Legitimately, those projects are not really off the ground in the point of like tooling and stuff like that. So it'll be a while before you see those. Don't get too, too terribly excited in advance of those. And then one other project that was at this show that has been announced already and we showed it to you from the las vegas ipms show and it is now officially in test shots and actually was in plastic at the show and the again screen captures of a live stream it was awful the pictures were terrible so i'm just going to use this mobius flyer that they put out and it is going to be a uh, ford f350 with a uh, tow truck bed attached to the back so Something that I think a lot of us have wanted for a very long time, which is an accurate tow truck. Some of us might have liked an accurate tow truck of a current, you know, <laughs> version. Something that we might actually be able to tow a car with now. But, uh, 
Yeah, and the realities of the hobby, a lot of things are from the, obviously the 50s and the 60s, and uh, this tow truck will be appropriate to tow them with. It will be based, obviously, on the existing F-Series tooling. A lot of the F-350 parts, of course, will come from the ramp truck that was done, and you're looking at, you know, basically the wrecker bed and the Hearst, or the, not the Hearst, but the uh, home setup for the uh, wrecker, uh, you know, itself. Uh, the PTO drive system will be new. There'll be a new, you know, shortened drive shafts because obviously it's not a long, long wheelbase like the Ram truck was. You have the new uh, push bumper on the front as well as having like a shorter exhaust system. This is going to obviously be on like an 8-foot bed uh, wheelbase truck and the ramp truck is like a you know 12-foot bed wheelbase so shorter frame rail shorter uh exhaust shorter drive shaft stuff like that that's being tooled up for this specifically of course with again with all the other record parts theoretically maybe before the end of the year probably after the first of the year on that that'll take us to round two now round two has a bunch of stuff coming that we don't have pictures of up here right now that should be out before the end of the year or thereabouts, maybe into the you know beginning of the first quarter of 2024, right? 71 Dodge Demon, a clone of the original 71 Demon tool with some updates and some tweaks, the way the 68 Coronet convertible was, where improvements have been done to the tooling, but it's sort of, uh, you know, to that tooling in the sense of being a, 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 that type of build quality. It's not a brand new tool like the, the Charger is, the 2021 Charger. Then you have the 60 Ford, uh, F100 and the 63 Ford F100. The 60 Ford comes with a trailer. The 63 comes with a slide-in camper shell. Both of those are sort of share some tooling, engines, chassis, and stuff like that. Obviously, bodies are different. Uh, but because they share some tooling, they're going to both be released more or less at the same time, again, around the end of the year, beginning of 2024. And then they announced a couple of new things at the Plastic Undercover show that was recently held at... Uh, the Akron area in Ohio. Uh, I will link to James Tester's Scout Model Experiments video of this uh, display if you want to see more of it than just a couple of pictures. But the three major things that were shown at this that are new are the reissue of the 77 Dodge Warlock. There hasn't been either a stepside or a 4x4 Dodge pickup truck done since 1981. This kit came out in 77, there was another version of it, and then another version of it, and then like 79 and then 81. By scale made states, it could be wrong on that, but that's general vicinity. And ever since then, it's been the kit that was released as the 78 Dodge uh, pickup truck, what, two years ago. Uh, this, you know, has the four-wheel drive system underneath of it, and... We'll obviously have brand new decals for the Warlocks uh, package if you chose if you so choose to do it that way. But again, it's the first time that the four wheel drive package has been available for this. So obviously, you could take that seventy eight uh, non non step side bed and make a put a four wheel drive chassis underneath of it. So that's an option. Next thing up will be a twenty twenty one Dodge Charger P Pursuit, the police package Dodge Charger. Going to have a CHP livery included in it. Licensing came through on that. And, uh, yeah, you're going to get some new parts here with the push ram bar and the CHP specific center uh, siren to it, dual spots, two light bars, two sets of wheel covers. Now, one little caveat about the, the wheel covers here is the wheel covers shown on the this and the optional wheel covers that go over them are the all-wheel drive uh, system. This car, this kit does not have the all-wheel drive system in it. It is the same uh, drivetrain and chassis and everything as the RT was, which is obviously a rear-wheel drive car. Now, Hemi all-wheel drive police cars were available in 2021. They stopped making them for civilians back in, like, 2015, 2016. But until 2022, you could get an all-wheel drive Hemi. So that part's fine. Most of the all-wheel drive componentry up front is covered by under all the body cladding. So other than, like, the CV shafts into the wheels, you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. So while it's a little disappointing that it isn't, like, exactly correct or whatever, it's the same time, it's like... I can live with this more than I can live with it being proportionally incorrect the way the 92 Mustang police car was. Um, possibilities exist in the future if this sells well enough that they may go back and retool in the rear wheel drive steel wheels and the rear wheel drive dress wheels to release it in another format because they submitted licensing for several law enforcement agencies and CHP just happened to be the first one that got back to them. So, um, all-wheel drive cars are very, you know, much more popular up north of I-40 especially. This covers probably most of the chargers that you would see pictures of. Um, and a lot of the state highway patrols and state police, again, above, say, you know, Tennessee. 
Um, those rear-wheel drive cars are, you know, CHP. CHP does use all-wheel drive cars, but um, CHP, you know, uh, Texas, uh, Florida, uh, Georgia, and, the, and, and down that way. Georgia does use all-wheel drive cars up north in the mountains, but to, you know, down south towards Florida, they're rear-wheel drive. Anyway, that's a, 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 certainly a, an interesting option. Have a nice new police car that's more 95% correct compared to some of the things we've gotten in the past. Like I'm looking at you, AMT, and that Taurus police car. <laughs> um, and then the last thing that they showed, and this is a rapid prototype. You'll notice there are two different wheel covers on here because those are the two options you're going to get for wheel covers. front one has a spinner uh, knockoff on some wire wheels. The other one has a factory stock hubcap. And this is a re- uh, imagination or a cloning of their original 1964 Chevelle Malibu SS Craftsman kit. So this is Craftsman. This is going to be like the 69 GTO and the 65 GTO in the sense that it is curbside without an engine. The hood is going to be separate on it. So if you wanted to put an engine into it, you could. But as it stands right now, this does not have any existing plans to be a full detail kit in the future. Uh, some interesting things to note here changes that they're making uh clear headlights clear taillights clear turn signals the grill and the bumper are separate in the front so it's not all one big gigantic piece that you're trying to wedge into the plastic and uh, you know some tweaks here and there for uh other fit and finish and improvements in that sense so uh yeah i mean this is probably one of the more requested things that has been demanded at least online in the sense of hey you're cloning old things and the 65 uh, 64 65 chevelles were destroyed forever by putting them into that ultra wheelbase car that came out last month we need a factory stock one and hey man, they actually listen to you so this is its own thing it doesn't share any tooling with the 65 gto even though you know underpinnings would be vaguely the same <coughs> in real life they are completely separate tools that don't share anything. So that's round two's uh, look at the future. And then lastly, we're going to go into Revell. This is a bigger thing as far as like things to talk about. So this comes up last. Now, several of these reissues you may have heard of already. If you're really, really into your forums, you're really into your Facebooks, your Stevens International, and you look at the listings of to be coming, to be announced kits and stuff like that. Um, some of these you may have already heard of. Some of them you may not. And uh, yeah, we'll go through all of them. So starting with those reissues first. Uh, they're going to reissue the 57 Ford Del Rio Ranch Wagon with some newly tooled parts. It looks like there's at least a new set of wheels and a new custom grill included here. Uh, these photos are from a slideshow video that Bill Spencer put over at, uh, I believe that's uh, Spencer1984.com, I believe this channel. Again, that, that video will be linked in here because he did some... Uh, die cast at the beginning of the video and then he did also did round two setup round two setup at the new york toy fair which is what this is from uh was pretty much existing things that they were selling to you know the, the new york toy fair is a is like a big distributor type thing like oh hey look we have on things we can touch and see and put out there for the, it's not open to the public so it's not like a hobby thing in the sense of like shizuka or all japan model hobby show where it's open to the public on the weekends this is not this is much more like the Nuremberg Toy Fair where unless you're an exhibitor you can't get in so anyway we don't know with all of the new parts here but just looking at the box art those would be the two obvious things and it's been a while since that kit's been out and then they're reissuing what they're calling the wide sides this Ford Dually six-wheeler pickup truck this is based off a snap tight kit that was done back in 1981 there are actually three versions of this one with a fleet side one with a uh, step side and then this dually that they did no, obviously not dually because dually didn't run on a six foot bed they're on an eight foot bed so it's kind of a fantasy thing uh this kit hasn't been seen since 1981 so it's it's certainly something certainly something had plastic wheels originally so be interesting to see if they replace those with rubber tires or if they're still going to be plastic wheels uh they're going to reissue the old monogram 77 jeep cj7 uh, they're calling it a two-in-one. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the inside of this kit, so I know what the two-in-one is here. But it certainly got the looks like it has the Golden Eagle uh, decal package, so that's uh, something a little different than it's been the last couple times it's come out. They're going to reissue the Ford Bronco half cab. You may recall this came, of course, with uh, a dune buggy and a trailer. It's a big box kit. This is just going to be the front end of that. If you didn't <laughs> now, if you bought that, you're like, I didn't want all this extra crap. I just wanted the half cab. No, 
whoops, sorry, but for everybody else who didn't buy one of those because they didn't want all the extra rest of that extra crap, they just wanted the half cow. Hey, 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 your your patience prevails there. So that'll be coming out. Uh, expect no changes there, other than the fact that it just has the the Bronco in it. They're going to reissue their '64 Impala again, this time specifically as a low rider with some new tooled wheels. Now the tires there don't have any white walls, but the box art does. Based on the way that Ravel is handling their tire branding and their tires in general, expect those white walls to be a decal to be placed on the tires. Um, otherwise, this should be, I don't think there's going to be any new tool parts per se with this, just again, just the wheels. So, um, it's a, you know, the, this has been a low rider kit all through the 90s and 2000s, so another whack at that, and this time, you know, some newly tooled wheels. Uh, let's see, what else, what else? Uh, reissue the 68 Pontiac Firebird 400. This is a pretty nice kit. I have one of the original releases somewhere. And, uh, you know, if you didn't, if you if you built one a long time ago and you can't find one now because it's been a while since they've been in production, hey, look, here comes one right now. Uh, two in one there because I think that had a California Wheels release at some point, so there'll be the big, uh, uh, Big tires and wheels in that. And then uh, C7 Chevrolet Bel Air 2-in-1. Again, this was a California Wheels kit at one time, too. Keep in mind, guys, this is not the ancient old uh, 1960s 57 Chevy. That belongs to Atlantis now. They've already released that, what, 18 months ago. This is off of the, I would call, new tool with quotes at this point because new, the thing was newly tooled in like the mid-1990s, but from that generation of Tri-5 tooling, the stuff that's underneath the 56 Nomad, underneath the 57 uh, uh, Black Widow, uh, 150, underneath the convertible, underneath the 55 uh, Chevys. That 90s era Ravel tooling is what this is based on. I think 2012 was the last time this kit was out, so it's been about 10 years since it was released last. And, uh, yeah, it's, it'll be good to have that back if you're so interested in it because, again, it's not the Snaptite kit. It's not that ancient, old, everything opens but nothing closes uh, Ravel kit. So good to see that one come back. <clears throat> now, in addition, we have some extra news, some newer stuff, right? Now, I said in the video about the Japanese All Japan Toy and Hobby Show, if you watched that, that I didn't expect there to be U.S. boxings of the 007 kits because of the fact that I thought incorrectly, as it turns out, that that licensing didn't extend into North America. Well, it turns out that it will be, at least in the sense of the 71 uh, mock Mustang here. Now you'll notice the the DBS kit is there, over there off to the side, but it appears to be in a Euro box. That Euro box doesn't appear to have the gift set attached to it, so maybe there will be a boxing of it that doesn't come with the paint and the glue, f easing their shipping issues of trying to ship flammable crap overseas. But it does appear that the 71 Mach 1 is going to have a U.S. boxing, as you see here. Um, this is going to be a 429 car, so it has a new engine in it, in addition to the Mach 1 parts, uh, like the hood and things like that, and the pie plate wheel covers and, and, and so forth. So, uh, this is, of course, based off the new 71 Mustang that just came out a few months ago as, as the Boss 351. So, new engine and the Mach 1 specific parts, and obviously, it's, you know, diamonds are forever, so it's, it's aimed at, at being the movie car. Uh, it has decals for those lower black rocker panel accents, things like that. So, you know, pretty cool. Um, not necessarily sure I go out and grab one right away, just because my collection is out of control as it is, and I don't need another kit that I'm going to build someday, but it's... Very nice kit in itself, and certainly something to be uh, grabbing if you're so inclined as a Mustang fan. Then they showed, unfortunately, the picture that I really, really wanted, which was of the sprue shots of this, nobody seemed to take a picture of. Because <laughs> remember, we're taking pictures off of a slideshow here. But they did include the pictures of some other things, which would be uh, the new Corvettes. If you have followed us very long, I think, I'm pretty sure at the time, because we were still running videos pretty actively at the time. We did a video uh, back in January covering the releases from Ravel of Germany for, like, 2023. And part of that was a listing for a Corvette C8. And it's something that, you know, a lot of people have been wanting for quite a while, a, the current Corvette. A lot of people couldn't give two craps less if you re if you release the current Corvette, but we're going to play to the demographics that care at the moment. So Z70 or Z51 coupe here, <clears throat> all new tooling, 145 pieces, left hand drive, right hand drive, 
and I have the fact that they have turning front wheels. They don't mean rolling; they mean turning, like a you know, like an import kit would, where you have a the old steering shaft that controls the your the uh, pitch of your steering wheel. Which, of course, you have to keep in mind when you're building that model. Turn your steering wheel that you're actually you know building that way too, because your steering wheel shouldn't be straight with your wheels cocked off to the side. Uh, Thirty-four piece engine, so it sounds like it's going to be a full detail engine. When this was originally announced, it was supposed to be like a ninety-nine part kit. So obviously the engine is a huge part of that parts count, but they've really cranked up the amount of parts included. I guess when you start throwing left-hand drive and right-hand drive parts into it, you end up with some extra pieces, so that's pretty cool. And then they also, and this was not announced at all, are going to be doing a convertible version of it as well, because hey, why not? Uh, this appears to have a, a larger rear wing, and at least in the, the plastic notice the plastic doesn't match the box art the plastic has a different set of wheels here now i don't know if those the both wings of both wheels are going to be included in both kits that may be part of the parts count as far as the 145 pieces you know four extra sets of wheels and an extra wing is quickly you know five extra pieces this is 148 pieces obviously because the entire roof will be a separate piece um I'm not sure how they're going to handle like the sound deadener between the seats if that's going to be something that the the roof just goes over or or what they plan to do with that but again i there's i've got no sprue shots so i can't tell uh, but yeah these are in plastic the test shots are done these you know these are as test shoddy as as uh, ravel gets with test shots in the sense of they're assembled in white in in white so to speak even though they're, i know they're molded in gray but in white in the sense that they're just a test build and then they'll be produced now the box art seems to be done and um i would assume that uh we're looking at very beginning of 2024 on these i don't think they're going to make it out before the end of the year they could be shocking revel things come out in spits and, and fits at this point there's no like rhyme or reason as to what arrives and when it shows up and what time things are going to be released so you know we'll go with a flow on these they'll be out eventually they're done it's not, not a mythological thing um it's just a matter of time for getting them out and then three other things that were shown at this show that are brand new Two of them are not brand new kits, but they're brand new series. They've licensed Stranger Things. I can't, I can't even with the fact that finally, I, I expected this with Ravel ownership when it was bought by somebody who actually had some money. Was at some point they would go and actually expand their tooling in some way of using a lot of the older stuff and and, and broadening it out. We're seeing a little bit of that with like new wheels and that Impala and new parts in that Del Rio Ranch wagon, and. These, again, two of these are going to be old kits as I show them to you, and then one is a brand new piece of tooling, which is going to be pretty exciting, I think, for some people anyway. So first up, we have the uh, the pizza wagon here, the Surfer Boy Volkswagen uh, pizza delivery van. It says newly tooled parts. I'm assuming we're going to be the roof uh, sign there, and then maybe the front grill, because the T3 as it exists doesn't have that lower front grill. I think that's a North American piece as far as the kit, the, as far as the one to ones go. Uh, the European ones don't seem to have that, and the actual kit itself doesn't have that. So whether or not that's going to be a piece that they add, or it's going to be a decal which will look awful because it won't be three-dimensional i guess we'll find out it's because you know some the wheel covers appear to look match the wheel covers in the kit exact as it exists it says 78 pieces the kit comes with 77 which like are we talking about one newly pulled part that roof <laughs> thing or you know are we mixing and matching pieces interesting to see next up in that series we have a 79 camaro and uh, this says newly tool parts. I think the hood is going to be new here in the sense that I don't believe there is a straight flat hood in the old monogram 79 Camaro. That's a three in one kit. Um, and I don't think that that kit comes with a flat hood as one of the options. I think it only came with like sort of the, the bubble uh, muscle bubble hood. I could be wrong. It's been a really long time since I've seen the inside of one of those kits. It says 81 pieces, which I think is light for the 3-in-1, but if you don't box in all the custom crap and the blower engine, then I think you'd get down to around 81 pieces. So it'll be interesting to see what the newly tool parts are there. And then lastly, this all-new tooling of a 85 Chevy Blazer. I saw this pop up and I was like, oh, okay. And I glanced at it and I went, wait a minute, there's no model of that. There's, there's you know, the old 70s Blazer that was just done as the bulldozer, but like the, the, there's no new, oh, no, all new tooling. <laughs> okay. 128 piece all new tooling, which makes me think in addition to matching the uh, Stranger Things police chief's vehicle here, this would lead into the possibilities of many a blazer uh, Jimmy kits in the future. 
right? You're not going to tool a brand new thing as a one-off. That's just not done. Of the Mustang, look, the 71 Mustangs, two versions of it within, you know, the grand that kit's been coming for a really long time before it showed up because the, the leaked, you know, images of them 3D scanning the real car, but since it's been released, it's going to have two releases real close together, and then there are parts that exist, at least in test shot formats, to do further versions of it. I would assume that this will get released this way, and then at some point, maybe not necessarily six months later, you would throw some big wheels and tires, some custom wheels, maybe a, a, a winch on the front, do some crazy yee-yee, you know, day two uh, custom blazer out of this. Oh, this has all sorts of different uh uh, things you could do with it, um, you know, take that frame, extend it out. Let's get a new series of mid '80s uh, Chevy and GMC pickup trucks. That will come directly out of this tooling, obviously, because that's too short a wheelbase for a short wheelbase uh, C10 uh, truck. But you know, what I'm saying this has the potential to really go somewhere. And even if an '85 Blazer isn't necessarily like whoop de doo and, cr and, and turning your crank, this really has uh, a lot of sort of future that you could plan into it. I'm very, very. First of all, I decided to have an 85 Blazer. I don't know. It's the Gen X in me, I guess. But also very interested to see where this goes long term because it could be something that has, you know, multiples upon multiples of, of you know, derivatives over the years. Especially when you start talking about, like, throwing a GMC grill at it and throwing some Jimmy decals in it. And now you have a whole new kit, basically, without, you know, tooling up to, like, three pieces. So... Very, very cool. So, there you go, folks. The hobby is not dying, or at least not next year. Maybe it will in 2025. We can always look forward to doom and gloom in the future, but right now, in the near future, you're going to be spending some money next year, and that doesn't even count the stuff that, like, the Japanese and the Europeans will end up doing. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that insight, and we'll see you guys on the other side.